Hello, this is Ashok from AJ Skill Development. This is a small instruction regarding watching this video recording. Whenever you are watching any video recording from AJ Skill Development, especially from the development part, don't watch the entire video in a single stretch, then start practicing because the video itself having one hour or one hour 20 minutes long so if you watch the entire video right you will start uh, find it very difficult to understand and also you will get bored what you can do you can watch the video for five to ten minutes have a pause then take a note then give a try of example explain in those five to ten minutes and concept explain once you are able to successfully complete the task then move on to the next 10 to 20 minutes like that you can split the video practice in between then you can continue the video okay have a good learning thank you okay so boolean boolean is a, a data type which can contain two values either true or false in real time in salesforce you know let's say there is a checkbox in your page layout the checkbox generally it will be stored in the form of a boolean data type it may be a true or it may be a false. Let's say if the checkbox is get selected, it will be store the value of true. If the checkbox is not selected, it will store the value of false. Okay. So how to declare your Boolean variable as usual. First, you have to specify the data type. The data type is Boolean and variable name. Let's say it is verified. I'm going to check whether it is verified or not. So for that, I'm using is verified. Is verified is, you know, simply a variable name you can give it like this also a is equal to true okay but uh, in as a, as a good practice you have to follow the naming convention okay i need to check whether it is verified or not for that i am declaring a variable called is verified okay so here nothing fancy you know it's a naming convention is verified so in the naming conventions generally you know uh, if it contains of uh, two words in the sense uh, you know first first word you know it will start with small and after that the every consecutive words first letter will be starts with caps so that's what the naming convention okay so as days goes on you will find that okay now i'm going to just display the thing in the screen so you will be doing it system dot debug so let me do system.debug. I'm going to just to print is verified. Let's see how it looks like. Is verified. Execute. Variable does not exist. System, maybe spelling mistake. Yes, system. Yes, now execute. Let's see what will be the output. It will be. It will be true. Okay. So this is how you can declare a variable in Boolean data type, or you can go for false also. These two values you can accommodate inside this Boolean variable. Okay, fine. Any doubt in that? So let's move on to the next data type. So the next data type, which I'm going to you know, teach you is a date and time. We are going to see date and date and time. There are two variables called two data types called date and date and time. The difference you can able to see the difference from the name itself. A date in the sense you can able to store only the date value. You cannot store the time value. Date and time in the sense you can able to store a date as well as time. Let me declare a variable date variable date. Okay, I wanted to you know display today's date in the screen. So how to find today's date, okay? To store the today's date, first I'm going to declare a variable called current date. Okay, let's take it as a current date. There is a built-in class called date. Okay, to find today's date, there is a built-in class called date. You can make use of it, okay? You see, this is the date is a data type. We are telling that this is a data type. Right. These data types will have its own built-in functionalities. These uh, data types will have its own built-in functionalities. Okay. So the prim primitive data types will have its own functionalities. We will te technically we will call it as a, a class with its own methods. But we will see that you know in the next classes what is mean by class, what is mean by method. Currently, you consider a date is a data type. It contains its own functionalities. Own functionalities in the sense its own methods. Okay, let's say I wanted to find out today's date. So what you will do, there is a built-in function called today. 
this is what intelligence editor when you start typing it you know automatically you can able to see the entire syntax okay so today is a function so i am going to give open bracket close bracket let's print current date and let's see what the output is so i am going to copy i am going to paste it instead of is verify instead of is verify uh, please mute yourself okay instead of you know is verified i am going to replace it with current date so i am going to highlight these two lines i am going for execute highlighted i don't want to see the previous output okay so just going for execute highlighted let's see what the output is okay you are getting the output as you know 10 5 2021 okay so this is what the default format you know which will be stored in salesforce so salesforce will store the uh, uh, date you know in the year month and uh, date format okay so this is since it is a date data type the time part will be coming as 000 okay so you can check it out here we are having a date variable so date in the sense by default salesforce will return you you know a date and time since you are using a date variable it will contain only the date part for the time part you will be having the output as 0 0 okay so this is how you can able to get the current date there may be lot of questions may rise in your mind okay this is in uh, you know in the format uh, year month and date i want my format we will do that okay how to format the date and time we will see okay still people are coming in okay fine so this is how you can build, uh, print the current date let's say i have my own you know uh, date values let's say let's say i wanted to convert these values 2020 okay and uh, month is 5 and uh, date is 22 so this is what i am getting from the user okay user is giving these values from your pick list or from a input box something like that okay giving from the ui user is giving these values now i want to convert these values into date and time okay so if you are having a set of values in for year month and date in the sense how you can able to convert this into a date format that's what we are going to see now so for that this is a date so i am going to declare a date variable a date i am going to use that current date okay current date one let's give it a sort i'm giving like this custom current date okay so i am having the values as a separate values now i have to convert you know date so date this is a built in as i told date is a built in uh, class it's a data type it has its own functionalities a lot of functionalities are there now i'm going for new instance okay so new instance is a method which had written by salesforce there is no need for you to look into it okay so only thing you have to concentrate is what this new instance will do what it does it will convert year month day into a date format okay so what is the year we have 2020 as an year so in this area i am going to replace 2020 okay what is the month month is 5 so i am going to give month as 5 what is the day it is 22 it is 22 now let's system dot debug this you know custom current date and see what the output is okay so let me give custom current date let me highlight these things and execute highlight and let's see whether it is converting into date and time date format let's see i am going for debug only you see here you can able to see that you know the printed value is 2020 is a year 5 is the month 22 is the date okay so let me make people in okay fine so this is how you can convert you know the values into date the first part what we had seen is how to get the current date and the second part is how to convert the user input values into a date format okay so these are all the basic things how to uh, you know deal with the dates and uh, a lot of functionalities are being available with the dates sometimes there may be requirement that you need to find out the date difference between two values and 
you need to find out number of hours elapsed between two days number of uh, you know days elapsed between two days number of month elapsed between two days so a lot of functionalities lot of requirements in real time you know will be revolving around these date functionalities okay so as days goes on we will see more functionalities on date so it will be very helpful in real time implementation when you know it's related with a uh, dates anyone has any doubts quick quick question on this you know date part otherwise i will move on to time date and time okay i will take it as you know you people are clear with this okay so after the session you can try this in your yeah please dinesh uh, here okay so it, it is the same format like uh, ddmm yyyy format right no 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 it will print as year month and date if you want ddmm yy you have to format that okay, okay. okay. so you cannot format a date but okay. you can format a date time so that uh, i will explain you next no, my my question is which uh, it is 20 2020 uh, may in the sense 05 right so instead of 05 yes. you get it as may mon so in that case yeah we have to format i will explain you next okay how to format yes. okay fine. fine this is how you can deal with the date so next part is i'm going to explain a date and time how to store a date and time how to find a current date and time how you can able to find that so for that there is a separate data type called a date and time okay so let me copy this or let me do like this okay there is a data type called date time okay so the difference between a date and date time data type is date will contain only the dates a date and time data type will contain both the date and time formats okay so i want to find out current date and time so let me go for it current date and time someone is joining let me okay current date and time so current date and time is equal to i need to find out current date and time for that you have a built-in class called date time okay to identify the date you have a built-in class called date to identify the date and time you have a built-in class called date time that is the data type okay so all the data types will have primitive data types will have its own classes okay so we will see in deeper in the upcoming classes what is class what is methods so i don't want to elaborate you know that point here okay so date and time date time dot i want to find out the current date and time for that you can go for a function called now you can go for a function called now now let me print this value now i am going to print this value okay that is current date and time i'm going to print current date time let's execute this and see what the outcome is let's go for execute highlighter before that close the previous one close the previous anonymous window i'm going for execute highlighter so go for debug only see here you are getting the date that's fine and you know behind that you could able to see 014923 so that is what your server time don't get confused with that time with your system time okay your laptop or your desktop or your you know your device may show some you know different time format but this particular data and time will be fetched from your salesforce server in the salesforce server which time zone you have set okay so based on that you will be getting that output you will not get your a uh, desktop or laptop date and time now okay so don't get confused with that so it is not matching so don't get confused in that uh, you know uh, way again repeating this will get the your configured servers uh, date and time based on the time zone you set there okay so this is how you can able to get the uh, time of your you know uh, salesforce server okay that's what you are getting it okay now the Sorry next question yeah please uh, so this this day, time zone is based on the user right you have the time zone in use yes. time zone field and user object that yes. field you're telling right yeah you are absolutely right okay. thank you so if you want to change the time zone in the sense you will be changing in there in the configuration okay okay fine so now uh, you know as dinesh asked you know how to convert convert it into a, a proper format i want the ddmmoy how i can able to format this 
So let me print, let me copy it and paste it. Okay. Current date and time. I'm going to format it. Okay. I'm going to format. For that, there is a function called format. I'm going to format. What is my required format? My required format is it should be date, it should be month, it should be year. Okay. Now I am formatting it. Okay. Now let's select these things and execute highlighter. Let's see whether it is formatting or not. Go for debug only. And let's see the anonymous window and both the outputs. Now check it out. Line number 15, you are going to print the date and time. So finally the outcome, you know, in the, uh, in the, we you know, debug log is line number two. It says that, uh, you know, uh, year, month and date as well as time. And the next one is I'm formatting it. Okay. I'm formatting to my custom format. DDMMYY. At that point of time, you know, see, it's 10 slash 05 slash 2021. So in that way, you can able to customize the uh, date time to your requirement. Okay. Sir, it should be 11 5 to 2021, right, sir? Why 10 5? You know, it, th uh, that's what I told your uh, system time may be, you know, showing 11. Okay. But your Salesforce server configuration might be in a different time zone. Mm -hmm. But in the previous code, why it's not show? It should show zero five ten, right? You see in the difference. Code? So in the line number one, it's twenty twenty one zero five eleven. In line number two, it's ten zero five twenty twenty one. Okay, 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 okay. Here you are telling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me try. This is small Actually, M also. Nine, line number nine also showed the same time whatever showing in the 17 but okay. when you go for a current uh, current date and time it's showing the exactly uh, that, I mean, yeah hmm. let, let me check it out let me check it out i think format to mm will not make any difference i guess that is the case it needs to be searched okay Okay, fine. Let's go on from the first. It is today. Today it's 10.5. Okay, fine. And then you're going for, you know, this is converting. Uh, leave it. And again, you know, when you go for a date and time, it is showing that, right? Okay, fine. 11.5. Minutes. Yeah. It's small in the sense it's a minute. So that will not make a difference. When you go for now, it shows the exact thing, right? Yeah, when you go for date time dot now, uh, you are uh, getting, yeah. Yes. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, line uh, the line number 17, it prints uh, 10 slash 53. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, I changed into small m, right? So that's why minutes is taking, taking it up. Okay, so now we changed it. Now you can able to see. Now the confusion here is, you know, when you go for a current date and time, it is showing, you know, 11 5 2021. When you go for formatting, you know, it is a 10 5, right? So probably it may be, you know, with the, uh, you know, uh, you know, here we are taking up the, you know, uh, uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, right? There may be some kind of roundup. Roundup may happen. It may be a floor. Floor roundup may happen. Let me let me confirm that, and uh, you know we'll explain you. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, okay. Uh, can we not change uh, uh, date and time dot today? Date and time. Dot today. In line fifteen. Okay. It says current date and time is equal to date time dot now. Okay. Yes. Instead of now, can we type today and see whether it's showing the perfect date or not? Yeah, that's we had, you know, already we tried here, right? Eight and nine, it's already there. So but let's yeah, execute. Uh, but uh, there we did it on date, but this is a date. And time yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm telling. Based on the time, there may be some a roundup may happen. Okay. See here for date. If you go for date, also you are getting ten five. Okay. So when you are going to round up the date and time. You know, based on the time, there may be some uh, floor kind of roundup may happen. So based on that, it might be printing. Okay. So it's always, if, if you want to get the date in the sense, it's better go with, you know, date. If you want to, you know, date and time, it's better to go with date and time. Okay. 
so you if you, if you want to format in the proper way you can go for you know a more uh, round up you know in a proper way of round up format you can go actually he is asking in a date time class can we use uh, today functionality on uh, date and time let me check it out now replace to today yeah let's let's check it out let's check it out whether we have today functionality here i don't think let me check it out yeah just dot today and uh... let's check it out today i don't think we have this function here Execute later, sir. See there, there is no you know built-in function called today with the date time class. With date time, you have only the function called now. Okay, it will return date and time only. Okay, so uh, let me check that you know why it is you know getting round up and you know let me confirm that. To my understanding, you know why it is getting round up is because of the date and time okay because of the time it may be round up from the date and time you are converting into date okay so you know it may be you know uh, past at all or not that may be you know get considered uh, uh -huh. since i guess uh, since our user details are using uh, us uh, time yes that's the reason it's showing 10 still yeah yeah yes that's what i told it's based on the user time zone you know you will get that uh, just... anyhow it will not get the local your system time it will not get okay it is based on your server time zone it will get the time i guess the format uh, which we have given in capital mm uh, instead of that if we give mon uh, maybe yeah that is the three digit format okay so that will not play any role with your uh, date okay? uh, it, whether it comes in digit or uh, like uh, april in the sense apr uh, J, in the sense J, in that way Yes, yes, you can go for that. Uh, you know, if you go for three digits in the sense, it will be in the characters format. Okay. okay. So a lot of uh, formats are available. You can, you know, try, you can search Google for different kinds of data and time formats. Okay. So just, I wanted to explain you how you can able to, you know, uh, format a date Hello? to you. Yes. Okay. Don't get confused with this. Okay. I don't want to mess it up Hello? here. Uh, yes, Ashok. Hello. Okay, I don't want to mess it up here. Okay, actually, simply to get the current date, you will be going for a date dot today. Okay, here you will not get any time value. Okay, so those who want to, you know, research on this, you can research. Okay, the, uh, we will keep it as a separate part. Okay, the researching thing, we will keep it as a separate part. Okay, to convert the date from your, you know, custom values, you can go for a date dot new instance. Okay, and to get the date and time, you can go for daytime dot now. So date and date time dot now, you are customizing again. You are formatting again to a date in the sense automatically. You know, obviously, your time part will be considered. So based on the time, your date will be uh, rounded up. Okay, so that's what I am coming to say. Sir, can I ask you a quick question, sir? Yeah, please. Sir, uh, uh, for me, I don't understand daytime dot now and go up. Uh, what is that, sir? Is that an operation? Uh, um, uh, make it very simple. Uh, date is a class. Okay. Okay, sir. It's a data type. Whatever the data types you have, let's say you have the data types as integer, right? Integer. You have a data type as string. In Salesforce, you know, uh, all the primitive data types will have its own built in functionalities, own built in class. Integer, in the sense, you will be having a class called integer. In the integer, you will be having some set of built-in functionalities. In the same way, date is a data type. Even though date is a data type, it has its own you know, built-in functionalities. Using those methods, you can able to get the system date or current time, you can able to get it. These all are the built-in functionalities written by Salesforce itself. Okay, sir. So data I understand. What is the dot new instance? Even that also the cell. Yeah, the actually, date? actually, uh, that's what you know. But there is a class and method functionality is there. I haven't okay. touched the class concept. Okay. So sorry, sir, sorry, sir. in future classes, we will be touching the classes. At that point of time, you will understand what is mean by you know the date. What is mean by dot and these dot notations and this is the method calling. Okay. You will call it as a method. This method will be a static because you are using the class name to call that method. Okay. So a lot of, uh, you know, object oriented related concepts involved it. So that's why I'm not going deep into it. Okay. So as of now, you can take it up as a date is a data type, which is used to store 
current date date and time you know you can use to store a date and time how to get the current date there is a built in method to get the current date that is called today if you use today you can able to get the current date why is that today is resides the today is returned by salesforce and it is kept inside the class called date okay so there is a class called date inside the date class salesforce has uh, you know returned the today functionalities to access that you have to use dot so date dot today the same way here also date dot new instance okay so mm -hmm. here let's say go for boolean in the sense it's a straight forward one you will be declaring a variable boolean you will be storing true or false integer you will be straight away declaring a variable storing the value for a date and time it is you know revolving with it involves class class and method functionalities since we have in touched the class and method functionalities for the beginners it may be confusing what is dot what is the things in the upcoming classes we will be seeing what is mean by class what is mean by method what is mean by dot notation how you can able to access this when covering those things it will be easy for you the purpose of you know taking this at this point of time at this junction is just to understand you know there is a data type called the date date and time exist and how to identify today's date and today's time we will do more researches you know on the dot notation and the round notation and those things we will do it in the upcoming classes no issue with that okay don't afraid of that those who have already familiar with class and you know uh, method formats they might have understand others just understand what it is uh, that's it okay how it works and those things when we go for you know classes i will connect to this particular functionality at that point of time how the built in things are work okay okay let's go for operators now we have you know yesterday we might have seen lot of operators plus minus multiplication and interesting part is with the division we have an operator called a division let's say there is two variables so i'm going to declare a variable x is equal to 5 and one more variable x is equal to 2 okay i'm going for system dot debug i'm going to divide these two things so let's say y x is y is equal to 2 I'm going for system dot debug x divided by y. Okay. Ultimately, it is five divided by two. Let's select this, run, and let's say what the output is. Whether we are getting two point five or two, let's see. What might be the output? Two. Two. Yeah. Yes. So you are getting two as an output. Why you are not getting two point five? because both the values are integers so when we are going to divide an integer by an another integer you will not get the fraction values you will not get the decimal values you will get only the you know the whole numbers so that's why you are getting two as an answer so a little bit tricky thing let's say instead of integer you can go for a decimal here okay so decimal in the sense you can store point values so, so that is called a decimal fraction values you can able to store it okay I'm converting two as a decimal. Now I am going to run the same program. Let me select it and execute highlighter. Let me go for it. Let's see what the output is. Now you are getting 2.5 as an answer. So when you go for the division operator, the only thing you have to keep it in mind is if any one of the variable is in decimal format, the output you will get it will be in a decimal format. But if you are going to store the output into an integer, automatically you will get the whole numbers only. Okay. So ultimate point is if an integer is divided by a decimal, you will get a decimal as an output. You will not get integer. Okay. But if you are trying like this, let's say integer z. Integer z is equal to x divided by 2. Now, what will happen when you divide these two things, you will get, you know, 2.5 as an answer, but you are storing those value into an integer variable. So automatically two will be stored into that. Okay. Any doubt here? So that's what you have to simple thing. You have to keep it in mind in case of uh, division operator. So now let's go for in you know, a assignment operator. So you might be pretty much aware that equal to. So what is the purpose of equal to equal to is called assignment operator. What is the purpose of equal to equal to is used to assign some value. Okay. 
so the right hand side value will be assigned to the left hand side part okay let's say x is equal to 5 in the sense in the right hand side you have a 5 5 will be stored into x so that is what assignment operator okay so here one more interesting part is let me declare a variable arithmetic assign i am going to do an operation called arithmetic and assign so let me do like this integer x is equal to 10 integer x is equal to 10 let me do like this x plus equal to 5 okay now i am going for system dot debug okay system dot debug i am going for x let me select all these lines and go for execute highlighter. See what is the output you are getting? You are getting the output as 15. So assignment we know that, but here what I executed is arithmetic assignment. Ultimately, the meaning is, let's say, if you are going to write like this, x is equal to x plus 5, what will happen? 10 plus 5, 15. 15 will be stored into x. So that's what you are getting as an output. So instead of writing like this in shorthand, you can go for, you know, x plus equal to 5. So assignment operator can be used to assign a value, but it can be added with the, you know, additional arithmetic operators also. Let's say plus, minus, multiplication, division. Okay. With these operators, it can be added up. If that is the case, it will it, you can consider it as a two functionalities. One is arithmetic operation and the second one is assignment operation. So x plus is equal to 5 is, you know, ultimately it is equivalent to x is equal to x plus 5. So initially arithmetic operation will happen and after that the value will be assigned with that. So wherever you are writing a code like this x is equal to x plus 5, okay, you can go for x plus equal to 5. So that is what arithmetic assign. The same functionality you can use for multiplication also. Multiplication division you can try. Okay, division equal to you can try. Okay, with all arithmetic operations you can be able to combine this assignment operator. So assignment generally you can use like this. It's a simple assignment. Here it is going for arithmetic assignment. Any doubts here? So Sir, if anyone equal to y equal to two y equal to 2 is the integer right y equal to 2 in previous okay. 24 you are talking about line number 24 24 yeah yes in a 5 is integer then 2 is also integer right uh, 2 is an integer but why are you are storing it into a decimal variable right so obviously it will store as 2.0 okay okay Okay, fine. Uh, let's move on. So we had so far we had seen assignment operator that is you know equal to yeah, you can yeah please. Sorry, sorry, I have yes, Mala. If it's a decimal and integer, this one mm -hmm. we know it's a small number, so we can uh, estimate that this will come in the decimal answer. If okay. it's a big number, whether we if doesn't, I mean, we don't know whether it's a decimal or integer, how can we give that? You know, it is based on your requirement. Let's say here I'm not going for five or two. Okay. So it is an integer. It is a decimal. I want my output as a decimal in the sense, you know, you can store it into a decimal variable. You want okay. your output as an integer in the sense you can store it, store the result into an integer variable. Okay. Got okay. it. Furthermore, you have, you know, couple of roundup options there in math, you will be having, you know, floor, you will be having seal kind of functionalities. As the days goes on, we will see that, okay, how you can able to round up to the nearest lowest value or nearest highest value. You can okay. round in that way also, okay. So at that point of time, math classes will helpful. Again, if I'm going to explain the math class in the sense, again, I go for math dot, okay. So if I'm going to explain something class name dot in the sense you should know what is mean by class what is mean by function okay so otherwise people may get confused you know for beginners okay. so that's why okay. I, I am not okay. touching that part okay okay yeah thank you thanks so this is arithmetic assign net next time going is you know not equal to how you will compare two values okay another interesting part how you will compare two values integer x is equal to five i'm going to declare one more variable integer 
y is equal to 10. Now I'm going to compare these two values. Okay. Simply I'm going to use system dot debug. I'm going to simply debug system dot debug. I'm going to give x double equal to y. So when you want to compare two values, two numeric values, you will be going for double equal to. Okay. So let me select these two things. And before that, let me, you know, close a couple of uh, previous anonymous, you know, outputs logs. So uh, to make the window clean. Fine, let's go for execute highlighter. Let me go for debug only. Yeah. Whether these two values are uh, true? No. X is not equal to 10. So you are getting output as false. So when you want to compare two values, you will be going for equal to operator. So equal to in the sense you will be specifying uh, double equal to. The same thing, if you want to compare whether these two values are not equal in the sense, you will be going for a not equal. Okay, X not equal to Y. Now let me select these two, three lines and go for execute highlighted. I am checking X is not equal to Y. I am checking whether X and Y are, you know, both are not equal. Both are not equal. Yes, both are not equal. If that is the case, you will get the output as true. So when you are going for comparison, you will be getting the output in the Boolean format. If you want to store the result of this comparison, obviously you have to declare your variable in Boolean format and you have to store that. Okay. So that's the thing you have to keep it in mind. Okay. So how you can be able to compare using double equal to suppose if you want to check whether the both values are not equal, you can go for not equal. Okay. So next the same concept i'm going to try with integer let's compare sorry let's compare string values let's see how the comparison happens let me go for a string str1 i'm going to give like this okay aj skill i'm going to give full caps okay let me compare the second thing quickly go for str2 here i'm going to going for a small letters aj skill aj skill now you are going for system.debug. You are going for system.debug. How you will be comparing as our previous experience says, we will be going for str1, w equal to, we will be going for str2. Let's compare these things, okay? Execute highlighter. So do you think that both are equal? What you will get? Any guesses, true or false? Any guesses? True. true. Uh, True. Uh, it will give false. True. Okay. Okay. It's nice to hear, you know, different true. opinions. Let's go for a debug only. Okay. We are getting true. Uh, you know, why, you know, it may be give a confusion whether it will come true or false because uh, this is the area where we will get confused. AJ skill, it's completely caps. Yeah. This is, you know, completely small. But even though the W equal to, see here, the double equal to will compare these two values a part of you know the cases it will not consider the case it will compare these two values okay so that's why always it's better to check it out with you know again i'm going for dot notation okay sorry for that okay just to compare the difference okay so let me try to do the same thing using a string class function we will see a lot of classes and methods in the upcoming classes okay it's unavoidable to explain this here so let me go for equals. Uh, there is a built-in function called equals. This equals is inside string class. Don't get confused with this at this particular line. We'll explain in future, you know, more clear way. Okay. So don't get confused. So we have a built-in function called equals. Okay. The equals can be used for strings to compare one string with another string. Here I'm going for str1 with str2. Okay. Now let's select these four lines. And let's go for execute highlighter. Okay, let's see how the outcome is. See here, the contradictory, you know, things happened here. When you go for double equal to, it says that it's true. When you go for equals, it says that, you know, it's false. So always it's better to go for equals when you are comparing, you know, two strings. 
okay rather than going for w equal to sometimes you know the user may uh, you are implementing this functionality in the password checking okay user is given the password now you have to check the password with the database okay so in most of the applications if it is small in the sense password you should type in in small only if you type it in uh, you know caps even though the same password it will not accept right so in those kind of areas if you go for e equal to in the sense to compare the two strings you may be you know get confused with the outcome uh, because it will not consider the cases it's a case not a case sensitive okay so always to compare the strings it's better to go for the built in method with e equals okay so here it will not consider the case here it is you know it will consider the case here also you can go for equals ignore case a lot of things are there i don't want to mess it up with the dot notation here because the beginners you know don't know about the dot notation right now as of now so i'm stopping it here with this uh, you know equals part okay so this is how you can able to compare two integers this is how you can able to compare two strings my you know my personal opinion is it's better when go for you know dot equals when you are going to compare two strings okay now now we are moving on to the next part that is sir, yeah. sir, sorry what do we call the dot equal is it a function here like yeah, the second one it's a it's a function okay. okay actually if you look at it deeply look at it there is a built in class called string okay there okay. is a built in class returned by salesforce called string inside that class they have a method called equals okay, okay. just we are consuming that that's it okay thank you instead of string why i am using str1 because str1 is a data type of string so obviously what all are the you know methods available with string i can apply on str1 and str2 okay so we will see you know deep you know regarding this you know in the upcoming classes so let's go for you know other operators that is increment and decrement operators okay this is called increment operators increment operators you might have you know seen this double plus that is called increment operator so let me explain you know how you can able to deal with that let me go for any integer variable x integer x is equal to 500 okay now i am going to add actually the meaning is which is similar to x is equal to x plus 1 it's just like you are going to increment the value of x by 1 that's what the meaning so instead of writing x is equal to x plus one you can write x plus plus okay the meaning is you are increment the value of x by one you are adding a value of one there okay now let's system dot debug and check it out the output so interesting you know factors can be identified here system dot debug you can go for you know x let me highlight these lines and go for execute highlighter. Let's see the output. You are getting find out one, right? So X plus plus that is called increment operator, which is similar to X is equal to X plus one. Any doubt in this? Because next thing you may get confused a little bit. So that's why you have to be clear with line number 45, 46, 47. Now, before I'm moving on to the. Yeah, I have next one part. now. Yeah. It it's, will add only one. Or, yes. uh, okay. It will add one. only one. If you want to add five I in the move. sense, how you can go, you know, x plus equal to five. Okay. Okay. We can add any numbers. Like any numbers here. This is called arithmetic assign. Okay. We, everything will be available in the uh, presentation which will be shared today you can able to get that okay so this is simply to add one value let's say you are going for a counter okay you are you are implementing a counter mechanism or a, a logic a counter logic okay you have to in, increase your value one by one okay if that is the case you can go for simply x plus plus instead of x is equal to x plus one okay actually these things will not make much difference but when looking at the code it may give you a feel that you know someone has written the code he has you know a little bit experience that's it okay so it's a it's a perspective you know it's giving a perspective like that that's it okay so as far as functionality is why uh, functionality wise instead of giving x plus plus you can go for x is equal to x plus one also that is also fine okay now the interesting factor let me copy paste in the next line it will be easy for you to compare now i'm go directly going to apply x plus plus here i'm going to directly apply x plus plus here 
now let me you know select these two lines select all the lines then you can able to easily compare let me go for execute highlighted duplicate field yes obviously it's a duplicate field let's go for y and go for y here let me select these things and go for execute highlighter let me go for debug only see the difference the output as line number 47 says it's phi not one okay and the output as line number 50 says it's 500 we are using x plus plus and here it is y plus plus so it should be the same right but that will not be the case so that's why you know increment operator you know that's the way increment operator decays in line number 50 what happens is it contains two functionalities you are trying to you know print your value at the same time you are trying to increment your value so two instructions are being given at line number 50 print a value and increment the value now which will get the precedence that's what you know the deciding factor for line number 50 so what the compiler does is it's an increment operator this is called post increment technically speaking this is called post increment so what it does is first the priority will goes to print the value what is the value of five oh sorry what is the value of y y's value is 500 so 500 will be printed first in line number 50 and then only its value will be incremented so how i can able to identify whether it is incremented or not no problem you can next line you can again go for a system dot debug and just giving a while now let's select these three lines and execute and let's see the difference it will give a clear picture now okay see here line number 50 gives me the output as 500 line number 51 gives me the output as phi not one so obviously you know it's clear that definitely y value is getting incremented okay but line number 50 the priority goes to printing the value so that's why you know i am getting 500 there okay so after printing the 500 the program will not stop it will increment the value so that's why y value is changed into phi not one so in the next line when you are going for printing the value you will see the output okay so when this will create a confusion let's say you are going like this you are you are your implementation is like this let's say z is equal to you are going for y plus plus okay here you will be you know in a confusion because let me go like this I'm going to print the value of Z here. And after that, I'm going to print the value of Y. Now let me select these four lines and go for execute highlighter. Let's see. I haven't printed Y value, I guess. So yeah. See, Z value is 500. Y value is 501. So this might, these scenarios may happen when you go for a post increment. Okay. So initially the value will be assigned line number 50. Y value is assigned to Z. That is 500 is assigned to Z. I'm getting 500 as an output. And after assigning Y value will be incremented by one and it will be stored in Y itself. So that's why line number 52, I am getting phi not one as an output. Okay, let's play with this a little bit. Let me go for plus plus Y here. Okay, now I'm going for execute highlighter. See here, now you are getting both the values same, phi not one, phi not one. So here the priority goes, you know, increment the value first, then assign. Okay. So that is the difference between, you know, pre-increment and post-increment. So as far as increment is concerned, you will be having pre and you will be having post-increment. If you put the plus plus, you know, after the variable that is called post-increment. If you put the plus plus, you know, in front of the variable that is called pre-increment. From the word itself, you can able to easily identify pre-increment in the sense initially it will increment and then assign. Post-increment in the sense it will assign, then only it will increment. Okay. So if you don't know this concept clearly, if you are going with increment operators in the sense, the assignment may create trouble. So you have to be clear about these concepts. Any doubts here? Okay. 
increment operator what it does it will increase the value by one that is one concept and another concept why are you are putting the increment value front of the variable or after the variable if you put the increment variable you know before the variable in the sense it will increment first then only it will do the assignment and those things if you put the increment operator you know after the variable it will assign and it will finish that task and after that it will go for increment or decrement whatever it might okay in the same way you can go for decrement also this is called uh, decrement operators this is called uh, decrement operators and you know while checking you know when both variables are equal you are going for double equal to right similar way you have triple equal to also in triple equal to you know if you know the class concepts in the sense we can explain that in the upcoming classes let's see we will see you know how to see the triple equal to triple equal to you can apply for reference data types you won't apply for the primitive data types you will be going for reference data type so to explain the triple equal to you should know what is mean by reference data type then only we will go for it okay so that's why i have an explained triple equal to there so this is how increment and decrement operators work now let's go for a logical operators okay so we will be using plenty of logical things okay uh, when logical things in the sense let's say x value is greater than 500 or x value is less than 500 in the meantime i want to you know compare more than two values let's say in the screen user has three check boxes now you know uh, my business logic should be i have to check whether the three check boxes get selected or two check boxes get selected I want to implement this particular, you know, um, my business concept into my Apex code. If that is the case, you should know how to use logical operators, how to use a logical operators. So we are going for logical operators. So mathematical operators, that's completed. Arithmetic operators, assignment operators, increment, mm -hmm. decrement. Now we are going for, you know, logical operators. What all are the logical operators exist? Okay, simply you can go for double ambassador this is called and you can call it as and okay and you can go for double five times so this is called or this is called or you can consider this as or and you have not this is called and not okay so these many operators are, are available and or and not we will see one by one let me take two variables x is equal to five as usual let me copy paste quickly and go for y is equal to y is equal to 10 y is equal let's say 8 now my business logic says that you have to check whether both the values x and y x and y are less than 500 so the requirement is the requirement is check x and y you know less than 10 so that's what the requirement now i need to find out whether both the values so let's say there is a you know opportunity amount i wanted to find out you know opportunity amount is in between two values okay if that is the case you can go for logical and operators now here the requirement is i need to check whether x and y both the values are less than 10 how you can able to do that so i'm going for system dot debug there is a conditional statement is there we will see the conditional statement in the next class Today, I'm not going for conditional statements straight away in system.debug. We are going to apply this. I'm going to apply x is equal to 5, right? I want to check x less than 10. And okay, so this is what you have to capture. And you know, when you're trying to say the things, you can able to easily find out the operator. What you have to check? X less than 5. And and in the sense, while implementation, you will be going for ambassador. Okay, so this is a logical operator ambassador and what you are going to check y less than 10 so you are going to check whether x is less than 10 and y is less than 10 if both the conditions are satisfied you will get true as an output boolean as an output if both the conditions failed you will get false as an output if any one of the condition fail you will get false as an output so the criteria is for using and is all the conditions should be satisfied 
all the conditions all the conditions should be satisfied if that is the case you will get true as an output if any one of the condition failed obviously you will end up with false so let's select these lines and go for execute highlighter let us check the output okay it is true why it is true because x value is 5 this is less than 10 so it's true y value it is 8 that is also less than 10 so i am getting you know true so true and true you will get obviously the true as an output let me change this value 8 into 8 let's see now you compare x less than 10 yes it's a true y less than 10 no it's a false so if it is a true false so now you can able to see that both the conditions not satisfied if that is the case you will get false as an output so let's select and go for execute highlighter so logical and operators can be used when you want to compare more than one criteria more than one condition at that point of time you can go for logical operator see there the output is false why it become false because the second condition that is y less than 10 that fails so that's why i'm getting false as an output so this is how you can able to use logical operators it is not to compare you know between two values if you have one more value in the sense again you can put ampersand and you can for let's say z in the sense you can go for z less than 10 you can write you know n number of operators like this okay so and will be used to compare you know whether all the conditions are satisfied or not okay so that is the takeaway point from here now let's go for our operator okay now I'm going to copy this. Agrashan. Yeah, please. Question. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, here uh, you said uh, line number 56, uh, check, uh, check X and Y less than yes. 10, right? Yes. So uh, can you, uh, in line number 59, can mm -hmm. we add both X plus Y less than 10? Can we check in that way as well? No, no, X plus Y in the sense it is not, you know, similar to the requirement. What the requirement is, you have to check x less than y and y less than 10 okay two different entities if you merged x plus y in the sense that is the outcome of x plus y okay that is not the requirement right okay okay so we can so, do in that way as well right yeah if the if okay. the if the requirement is like this let's say i'm coming to your if the requirement is check x plus y less than 10 if this is the requirement you can go for x plus y less than 10 okay Okay, same way. Okay. Yeah. So, but the requirement is not like that. You have to individually check whether both the values are less than 10. So, that's why you're going okay. for this. Okay? okay. So, it is depends on the requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Now, we are going for R operators. R in the sense, you know, what R does is if any one condition satisfied, you will get, you know, the output as true. Any one condition, any one condition true you will get true as an output you can say as any one condition true or any one condition satisfied you will get the output as true let's say i am going to check previously it was false okay because the second condition failed now i am going to check x less than 10 yes x less than 10 true y less than 10 no y is greater than 10 but even though y is greater than 10 this condition failed my first condition satisfied so that's why I will get, you know, true as an output. So that is what the purpose of using R. Okay. Let's say there is a requirement again comes into the picture in the user interface in the UA, you have three checkboxes. If any one of the checkbox gets selected, your code need to be get executed. Okay. So you have to uh, capture that requirement. If any one of the, you know, checkbox gets selected if it means any one of the condition needs to be satisfied if that is the case you can go for or operator there let me highlight these three lines and go for execute highlighter let's see how the outcome is okay you were able to see you know it is true even though second condition failed, it says the output as true because the OR operator will consider any one of op any one operation gets satisfied, it will return true. If all the conditions failed, it will return, you know, false. So let's say if this is also 50. Okay, now X is less than 50. No, 
y is less than 10 uh, sorry x is less than 10 no y is less than 10 no now if you execute this you know your output will be false see your output will be false okay so this is how you can apply our operators okay while implementing we will not use system dot debug when writing apex class we will be using you know if conditions and those things so those things we will see in the upcoming class uh, that is tomorrow's class okay so today i am going to you know deal with and and or just understanding the concept of and and or for the beginners that's it okay so one more operator is there not operator not operator you know we will see uh, tomorrow's class today i'm going for you know a ternary operator because you know there is a to do is based on this ternary operator so let me cover the ternary operator let me go for ternary operator there is an operator called ternary operator okay so this is also an interesting operator let's see integer integer x is equal to 500 what the ternary operator does is the ternary operator syntax is inside a bracket you can apply the condition what is mean by condition let's say x less than 10 this is a condition okay it will check the condition if the condition is satisfied then you have to apply question mark you have to apply question mark if the condition is satisfied what the value you want to return or return value what do you want to return you have you can specify if the condition failed what do you want to do okay i want to return a separate value you can specify it here this is a simple ternary operator okay now i am going to implement this implement it let's say i am going to compare i am going to compare x okay x is equal to 500 i am going to check x is equal to 500 okay i am going to check if this is true i am going to return okay it's 500 okay if the condition fail I want to return it's not equal to 500. Okay. So this is the condition you are going to check. If the condition satisfied, what do you want to return? You have to specify it after, you know, question mark. So if the condition fail, if you want to return something in the sense, you can specify after the colon. It need not to be a string. It can be an integer variable. It can be a decimal, whatever it may be, you can able to return. So obviously it is going to return a value, right? It is going to return a string value. To store that, I'm going to declare a variable called str. So string str is equal to this expression will get executed. And in a single point of time, either it's 500 may be stored in str or it's not equal to 500 may be stored into str. Now to get the output, I'm going for system dot debug. System dot debug. I'm going to print str here. Okay, str. Let's see the output. What the output is? See, you are getting the output. It's five hundred. Why? The x value is five hundred. So this condition gets satisfied. If the condition gets satisfied, you will get the statement, which is after the question mark, you will get that as an output. Let me change it into 400. Let me change it into 400 and go for execute highlighter. Sir, I didn't understand what is this doing? It is comparing the values? Yes, it's comparing the value. Actually, what it does is it's comparing X value is equal to 500. Okay see the output it is not equal to 500 what happens is it is comparing whether x is equal to 500 no x is 400 right so it will automatically identify the colon and it will return the expression which is after the colon okay what is the okay. expression after the colon yeah. it is not equal to 500 so it will return it. if it is 500 in the sense it will return the value right away after the question mark okay so uh, this is a way of instead of writing an if condition in a single statement okay for a if there is a single statement needs to be get executed in the sense this is a shortcut people will go for the ternary operator okay so again uh, this is what very 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 important the syntax you are going to check a condition this is the condition it may be equal to it may be less than it may be greater than whatever it may be and after that what you are going to return you are going to return your value in the sense it's a true part 
after colon you will be returning your false part let's say there may be a scenario okay i'm going to return it's 500 and after that i want to compare one more value in the sense you can go in this way okay initially you apply this in the you know anonymous window and try okay i'm not going to confuse you you can try like this okay in the false part if it is not equal to 500 i want to compare you know with different values again you go for one more ternary operator okay x okay x is greater than 600 if it is true question mark the expression if it is false you know let's say i'm some randomly i'm giving some character i'm i'm going for you know false something like this x y z let's say a b c let me explain this part let's say the first this condition is checking x is equal to 500 if it is true it will return its 500 if this criteria failed it will go for the false part that is after the colon after the colon there is no a single statement again one more expression i am going to checking one more expression so if it is an expression again you can go for colon if this condition is satisfied it will go for you know this abc if this condition fail it will go for xyz in this way you can you know <coughs> link so many conditions in a single line okay this is what a ternary operator is all about any doubts here is it confusing else is right yes obviously so before going into conditional statement i want to touch this part that's it instead of writing you know people they who already knows you know if else if this is similar to that okay instead of writing a single statement for if you can straight away go for you know ternary operators it looks beautiful when you return it in a single line instead of going for curly braces and uh, you know, again you know if else if else if like that you can go like this is it confusing or it's clear how many conditions can you check for uh, this tertiary operator yeah Turn currently in. currently i can say it's an n number of operators but it is you know uh, uh, it is uh, a researchable thing okay so the takeaway point here is you know instead of using if else if else if you can simply use a ternary operator there okay so the point you have to keep it in mind you can you cannot do system dot debug inside here it should return a value it should be an expression it should be a value okay so this is the expression if the expression gets satisfied the true part should be returned otherwise the false part should be returned okay in the false part you can check one more you know ternary operator one more condition you can check for each and every condition you will be having a question and a colon part question is the true part colon is the false part you can say question is your true part you can consider that question is your true part and colon is the false part okay so you can consider like this so today's i'm going to wind up here so let me quickly go for so everything will be specified here and let me quickly explain so i think today's to do is just here let me So this is the today's uh, do it yourself using ternary operator. Okay, let me explain it quickly. You need to declare three variables. Okay, you need to declare three variables. Obviously, the variables are used to store mark of a student. Let's say mark one, mark two, mark three. You can declare three variables. You have to find whether a student is pass or fail using ternary operator. Okay, pass in the sense if the student got you know more than 50 in three subjects it's a, you can consider it as a pass okay it is up to your logic okay you have to find the result and you have to print the result and you can split it into two ways this is first part the second part you have to find a grade for the student you have to find a grade for the student and print how you will find the grade let's say you know it may be any logic as per this slide is concerned you are going to find the average that is you are going to add three marks and three marks is out of 100 so you are going to divide it by 300 and you are multiplying it the result by 100 you will get an average okay yes. so now you have to find out the grade but the grade should be you know it should be pass and average should be greater than nine in the sense it says grade the student is passed and the average is greater than 80 it is a in that way if the student is failed 
obviously you should get output as no grade okay you have to implement this using ternary operator no if conditions Rajan, one quick question like uh, yeah. to get the output we are using system dot debug right so yes. how to get the input from the user no, we as of now, as of now, in the anonymous window, you won't have any concept to get the input. Okay. okay. In the anonymous window, there is no, you know, there is no concept called, you know, seen programming like, you know, C plus plus. You will be using, you know, print of or you will be using C in C, C in, right? So those kinds of statements will not be available with, uh, you know, anonymous window. How you will implement this Apex code? That's what I am telling. You know, this is not the real-time implementation. You will not implement all the code in the anonymous window because user 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 does not aware of your anonymous window. User will not come into your anonymous window and open your code and they will write. They will simply click a button. They will input some value in the input box. They will select a drop-down box. So user's life will be mostly with clicking a button. Okay, when they click a button, automatically your code will get executed. So obviously this is not your endpoint. You will be creating a class and you will be writing your implementation. Okay, to understand the concepts, we are going for anonymous window. In real-time implementation, the input will be through a text box or through a drop-down. It will be from the user interface. So that is what the input. Yeah, thanks. Okay, fine. So I think you can go for this. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we have uploaded this uh, slide in our drive. If anybody don't have access for the drive, you please reach me in my mobile. And uh, you can start work on this uh, assignment and the trainer will be available for another 15 minutes. By 8.30, we'll be having a short break, 8.30 to 9. After nine, I will be sharing a Q&A session links. Okay, in that link, you can join, you can do live practice. And if you want to get a clarification on any of the concept explained, or if you have any other doubts apart from today's session, any other doubts in any other use cases and case studies, you are welcome to ask. So next 15 minutes, the trainer will be available. 8.30 to 9.30, 9, we'll be having a short break. Thank you. Uh, hi Nagaraj, one quick question for you. Yeah, please. So the whole Apex code is a it's not a case sensitive, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It's not a case sensitive. Okay. It's not a case sensitive. Okay. Any I mean whole whole Apex code is completely it's a case sensitive. There is no way, you know, something is case sensitive, something is not case sensitive. It's nothing like that, right? No, it's it's not like uh, not like that, but some best practices will be followed, right? So let's say if you're going to write a class in the sense you will be start with the capsulator, right? So okay, okay. Uh, as you see in the first line, do it yourself in your screen, right? Do is in caps letter. So those are the best practices. As for the best practices, it will be followed. Oh, okay. Got it. And other question. Yes. Every time, so uh, is there any option to, you know, get only the debug uh, only messages all the times whenever I run the code? Every time we're just clicking the debug only option, right? Is there yeah, any uh, default uh, option? Actually, Always? Uh, yeah. Actually, this uh, debug and uh, similar to system.debug, you have system.assert, you know, a couple of things are there. Actually, this is only for developer perspective. This is only, you know, helpful for developer. It will not help, you know, in any case for the end user or your customer. Okay. The system.debug, you know, if you have the system.debug in your Apex code, the user will not see that. Okay. So this is only related to, because you will see this output in the logs. The logs, who will see the logs? you know, the developer will see the logs. So system.debug generally used in Apex code to identify the intermediate result. You know, you may have some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, you are no. not sure what may be the output here. At that no, point no, of time, you'll be going is, for system.debug. No, I understand. I understand the objective of the uh, debug purpose. Just to troubleshooting mm -hmm. purpose, you can go for this, you know, wherever yes. you can print yes. the statements. My question is, so whenever you run this code, you have to you know click the debug only then only you can see that i mean you can see the complete log i don't want the complete log i just want to see only the debug only yeah, that's why you're going for that option debug only. correct every time we are just clicking that option yes uh, yes it so, will be cleared right so is there any by default option only i just want debug only i don't want the other complete log so whenever yeah. you the code Oh, you because you know the... every time you will be see you know a new execution log you know happen in your screen right it's not the whole log. If it is going to, you know, print in the same log in the sense, it's okay. The the checkbox will be get selected. Okay. So every time when you're going for execute, it will open a new window. Okay. Correct. So new window, we need to click. Yeah, that you have to go window. for debug only. Yes. 
Correct. But so here, time, here, here yeah. you can go for open log. If you click the open log, there is no need to double click. If this checkbox is not selected, every time you have to do one more operation, you have to double click this log. And then only the debug log will open in your screen. So that's why here we have, you know, marked this option as, you know, selected open log. Okay. S sir, and the ternary operator, you have string str equal x equal equal 500. Can you have x greater than or it's always equal? Yes, equal? yes. Any, any operation you can apply there. It may be equal to, it may be less than, it may be greater than, it may be not equal to. So any operators, you know, logical things you can apply there. You can apply yeah. and also inside that. Let's say you can compare like this. X is equal to 500 and x okay. is equal to you know 600 it may not be you know sense but still you can able to do like this okay logical okay. operators also you can apply ah yes please uh, number one the uh, y plus plus x plus plus means which, uh, the operators which we are using pre and post uh, plus plus use control Amma. Uh, other usage means uh, uh, plus plus one day the car is value on the one increment under the car. If I'm both in the canoeing line, in a plus plus use punning of dinner, the value on the fifty one no more. But in the other monadic use punning other front la putting now the pair pre increment. At the end of one of dinner, first value of marketer are the caparna assignment of printing open. Okay, wow. 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 Uh, hello, Nagarajan. Uh, yes, please. Uh, in the end doubt, na, if we have integer declare controlling la. Ama. So in the integer la, when the number or or more integer mark when integer mark to, apni da kurukno ma, ila kama potu number. Uh, kama kama potu kama potu niye kurukla. Kurukla ma okay. Um. Okay, fine. In the Marie Nare Vishangal, if only mind la tone of the Lian, the Manare Vishangal, either long load of learning points, either Ninga on the immediate anonymous window learning a potaining a tripala, it will give you, a, you know, a very good learning for you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And in uh, section 4.2, do we need to do F, if else here or no, we need to use also ternary operator? You have to make use of ternary operator as possible. Yes, you can make use of ternary there because it's a series of condition checking, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it will give more clarity on ternary operator when you go for, you know, like a point number four. Hello. Ah, yes. Sir, and the program the 29th code control extend sir. Hmm. Sure. You do what? Ah, yes, sir. Ah. If you have a problem, you value in 10. So, if yes, you add 10 to 5, you can add the line. If x to 5, you can add the x is equal to x plus 5. Now, you x to 10, 10 plus 5, 15. 15 is the store of x. If you have a short 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 Okay, wow. and may output or a produce for no, but either one the inup shot I'll ring x plus equal to five na in a meaning x could a five add panita, either first execute x could a five add panita, add the result either assign for no, x lay assign panel, other other meaning. Rend may output on the core output of produce for no, either one the short and arithmetic assign the so long. Rend operation at a kade, one arithmetic operation, add the assign operation. First at a kade arithmetic. Okay, 
Sir, in the automatic operations uh, plus plus, why it is showing 501 and 500 later? Yeah, that's what the difference between pre increment and post increment. Okay, so there are two types of scenarios. One is called pre increment, and another one is post increment. If you put a plus plus after the variable, that is called post increment. Post increment in the sense, first it will try to assign the value, and then only it will try to increment. If you used a plus plus in front of the variable, first priority goes to increment the value, then only it will go to assign. So that's why you are getting that difference. So in post increment, uh, 500 will display first, right? Yes, yes. First it will assign, it will display, and then only it will increment. Okay. In pre increment, it will increase first, thereafter, we'll get 500 later. Yeah, oh, you are absolutely right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Sir, any one scenario where we will use uh, pre increment and post increment in real time? Oh, that's Just what on. you know. Uh, that's what I already explained someone in uh, native language. Actually, the thing is, you know, uh, before doing some mathematical operation, before increment the value, you want to store the old value in some area. If that is the case, you will be going for, you know, post increment. Okay. There is no scenario like that in the sense you will be going for pre increment. It's pretty simple. Before increment the variable, you want to store the value somewhere in the sense you will be going for, you know, post increment. <laughs> Uh, ah, yes. Uh, and, and do it yourself. The second uh, find result for uh, Ama. Moon Moon check Panama, Tanitania check Panta. Adriana Kutruko second point are result contributing. Yeah. So uh, result on uh, result to pass or fail. Pass or fail now. Moon subject may one the pass or fail and check. Either, either yeah. one la fail none. Fail down. Fail down. Kantipa. Kantipa. Hope you understand the do it yourself. Okay, don't start the do it yourself directly. First, try the examples explained and the concepts already explained in this video. Only then start do your do it yourself. Don't do the do it yourself without trying the examples or concepts already explained in that video because that will confuse you. Okay, thank you. Working on the case studies, do it yourself or practicing the example explained in the video, you got some doubt or you are facing any errors, feel free to take that as a screenshot and post it in the AJSD WhatsApp group or the Telegram group, you are part of it. You can get that community assistance. If still you find a difficulty and you are looking for a, a real time live explanation and a doubt clarification, feel free to join our live Q&A session with our trainer. They will assist you. Thank you.